section 442 example 8 this is um, a classic problem that we saw when we looked at the method of images basically we had a point charge Q a distance D above the plane and below the plane we have a dielectric instead of a conductor we have a dielectric a linear dielectric and the question is calculate the force on that charge distance D above the plane um, so um, first thing you can do is you can say well is there any bound charge inside of the surface inside below you know z equals zero this is at the level z equals zero and the answer is well since there's no free charge down there we're dealing with linear dielectrics there's no bound charge that comes from this the equation that we used earlier that said that <clears throat> the bound charge is going to be equal um, minus uh, chi e over the susceptibility plus chi e times the free charge. So there's no free charge down there, so there's no bound charge down there. So that's there's no bound charge. So we only have a, a surface a surface bound charge. Now we're gonna remind ourselves that the surface bound charge that's just the polarizability dot the n hat vector, which in this case the normal vector is the k vector. So we're just gonna take the z component of the polarization that'll give us the surface bound charge and because this is a linear dielectric the polarization at the surface there is going to be equal epsilon naught chi e times the electric field right there just inside the surface well just put this is actually the magnitude of e not the e vector in the z direction the electric field in the z direction so how do we calculate that? Well, the electric field is going to have some part of it that's due to the charge that's above the plane, and it's going to have another part of it that's due to the the surface uh, charge. And um, the trick that we're going to use to solve this is well, the electric field due to the charge is simply written out as uh, down here. It's negative one over four pi epsilon naught. I'm sorry magnitudes again. Um, the charge r squared plus d squared to the three halves and that's pointing in the k hat direction where r squared is just x squared plus y squared. Okay. That's the electric field due to this charge above. So what is the electric field due to the surface charge along here? That's actually um, easy to calculate if you use Gauss's law and you draw a tiny Gaussian surface. Let's use a light color here. It's a nice pink color. I don't think I've used this before. So we're going to draw a nice Gaussian surface and remind ourselves the electric field is perpendicular um, at that point. Then, because when you zoom in, it looks like an infinite surface of uniform charge density, right? And so the rule for Gauss's law is that the integral along the surface is uh, e dot dA is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed. Well, how much charge is enclosed? Well, that's the area of the top and the bottom times the surface charge density, which is sigma b times the area. What does this integral give us? Well, the sides give us nothing, but there's a top and a bottom. And the top and the bottom I'm going to give us two electric fields, E's, and the area is just the area of the box. Okay, and so we can multiply and divide the electric field due to the surface charge is going to be um, this is above, and it's going to be negative below. Okay. So we're dealing directly right just inside of the surface, right? Just inside of this dielectric. The two electric fields are going to add, and we're going to get this equation. So sigma b is equal to this, equal to epsilon naught, chi e, and the electric field due to the polarization and the whatever external fields there are. So the external field number one is due to this uh, surface, this charge above the surface over r squared plus d squared to the three halves minus the surface charge 
uh, the electric field due to the surface charge inside. Two epsilon naught, sigma b. Okay. So doing a little bit of algebra here. Let's use this hot pink again. This cancels that and that. We distribute the chi e. So this becomes, there's a chi e in there. There's a chi e in there. And so we get sigma b one plus this coefficient, chi e over two, is equal to minus chi e over four pi, q over r squared plus d squared, all of that to the three halves. And then we can take sigma b and divide both sides by one plus chi e, we get one over two pi, let's take a two and put it over here, chi e over two plus chi e, okay, q over r squared plus d squared to the three halves. If you remember we, we calculated before what the surface charge would be if the um, if we had a conductor, right? This is almost exactly like that answer except for we have this factor of chi e over 2 plus chi e, okay? And the interesting thing is is chi e as a susceptibility tends towards infinity this becomes 1 and you get the case of the conductor. So there's many times there's a case where if you take your susceptibility and have it tend towards infinity you should have the behavior of what you'd get if you had a conductor. So now we have the surface charge on this, this dielectric surface due to the um, charge above the surface. Now the question is how do we calculate the electric field so we can get the force? And a naive way would be, oh let's just plug the sigma b into this formula equals the integral of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught the integral of sigma b times the area and it's going to be r hat over r squared. That would be hard. We're going to do an easier way. So using the method of images, we're going to find an electric field that would satisfy Poisson's equation. Um, and in order to do that, we're actually going to have to think about the potential above and below the surface. Um, and we're just going to basically we're going to find easier problems that give us the same answer. So using a new sheet of paper here. Um, so if we had a charge here Q, dot, 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 there's zero, dot, 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 and we had a charge here minus QB, okay, then the potential above here would equal 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q over um, R squared plus D squared to the one half plus QB over R squared plus D, D squared to the one half. Okay? Now if we had uh, two charges above the surface, then the potential below would be one over four pi epsilon naught Q plus the bound charge over r squared plus d squared to the one half. I feel bad. I kind of skipped a step. How much total charge is there? Um, again, if you go back to that problem that we solved earlier, you'll, you'll find the total charge, the total bound charge, is equal to uh, chi e over 2 plus chi e of the original charge on top. Okay, it's that same factor there. Pretty easy. So we have these these equations, so now we have this, the potential on top and the potential on bottom uh, using method of images. Both of these would give us the, um, so let's see what these would give us for the um, surface charge density. So we have, if we take uh, negative epsilon naught times the derivative of the potential with respect to the normal, which is z, at z equals zero on the positive side, and we subtract the derivative with respect to the normal, which is z, at z equals zero on the negative side, that will give us equal to um, the, um, I'm drawing a blank here. That should give us the same answer we would get if we had a surface charge of b, um, which uh, should be, 
negative one half chi e over chi e plus two times q d over um, r squared plus d squared. Okay, so this is this is the result uh, that we found when when we were looking at um, way back when we were looking at how surface charges behave. Um, basically, the potential, the derivative of the potential, has to change as you cross that surface charge, um, and that's going to give you the surface charge one over epsilon naught of the surface charge. So. And that's what we got there. I hope I'm not just BSing my way through this. That's what I believe it is. Um, so this says that the potentials we just discovered here satisfy this equation. And so they must be true. They must be correct using some kind of uh, uniqueness theorem to, to make it all look right. So given this potential, the one above there, the... Um, The force, which is just Q times the electric field, which is just Q times, uh, I believe that E is negative of the gradient of the potential, will give us this equation. Negative one over four pi epsilon naught. Um, this factor of chi E over chi E plus two. And basically just the charge uh, below there um, times the charge itself all over the distance squared. And that's going to point down from the k hat direction. And what's charge B? Well, we've already solved that several times. Where did it go? Here we go. Charge B is this guy. Why did I have that? No, no, no. This factor does not exist in the beginning. And then we plug that in. Chi E over 2 plus chi E. And now we have charge squared over 2d squared in the k hat direction. And there's our, there's our answer. Um, so there's a lot of different components here. This wasn't an easy problem to solve. Um, if you have questions, you can post it below. And I'll try to answer it. And I may do this one over again because I think I wasn't quite clear on this step up here. Um, so anyway, thanks. Take care. And bye.